Right guys, it's Thursday, just got back from the States yet again. Um, feeling a bit jet lagged, a bit tired. Very dehydrated, as you do off a flight. But um, still, you know, you gotta come and get the work in. So today is deadlift and back day. Now I wanna take you guys for a little demonstration of how to deadlift because I see some absolutely terrible terrible forms out there people lifting deadlifts like like a like a cat taking a shit so um you know i've seen a lot of people hurt themselves doing deadlifts so i'm gonna finally as the king of deadlifts i'm gonna finally teach you guys how to deadlift properly the proper form and how to get your max potential out of your body to get your deadlift up as high as it can get so i'm gonna start with deadlifts i'm gonna work up to Oh, probably just a tough set of five or six reps. I'll do that a few times as a working set. And uh, and then I'll get on to the upper back stuff. Now the upper back stuff, we'll get into this when we talk about the deadlifts more, but the upper back stuff is is a really essential for getting anything above the knee, getting that lockout. So like the lats, the rhomboids, the back of the shoulders. Uh, people neglect these for deadlifts, but honestly, that's how you finish your deadlift off. If you haven't got a strong upper back, you will never be a good deadlifter. So, just mix my drink and then we'll get stuck in. Hey buddy, you right? If it wasn't for oblivion, I wouldn't be the man stuck here today. <laughs> you see before you. First things first, deadlifting, you've got to have a good bar. Proper deadlifting bar is essential. You can't deadlift on these the standard sort of powerlifting bars, they haven't got the right amount of sort of tensile strength in them to sort of give you that little bit of whip that you need to get a good deadlift out of a bar. So this is, uh, I think it's a proper Texas deadlift bar, uh, specially made for me. And I lock it up to stop people fucking using it because people bend bars. And this is the actual bar This is the actual bar I pulled 500 kilo on. So it's uh, got a bit of history behind it as well. Oh. Hey, mate. I always found the best way to teach someone how to deadlift would be a deficit. So. You put the bar out of the rack and you lower it down nice and slowly and you just touch it on the floor and you remember that position because that position is the position you should be starting in. The second rep, when you're doing reps for deadlifts, does anyone ever find that the, the second rep of the deadlift is always the easiest rep? And that's because once you've done your first rep, the second rep drops in a straight line and that means it's going in a perfect A to B motion. And usually the first rep on the deadlift, it's usually off that mark and you're not pulling A to B, you're pulling A, B, C. So to get that right in the first instance is the most important thing. You're getting the most power off the deck. You're getting the most efficient way of how to pull a deadlift. So it's all about dropping the weight nice and slow, keeping it close to your body, keeping it close. Make sure you fold your shins in. Shins are touching, shins are touching, shins are touching. That is the perfect starting position for a deadlift. Now, stand up right, come to the side. A deadlift should always be in the middle of your foot. And when I say the middle of your foot, I mean heel to toe. So, the bang in the middle, and if you look down at my foot right now, you'll see that is bang in the middle of my foot. And that is the perfect place to start a deadlift from. That equation works for 99% of people. Some people have really weird levers. I find that um, small people actually have like, the, sometimes the levers are completely different. They have to have it like leaning over the toes a little bit more. But for most people, bar in the middle of the foot, that's a perfect starting position. So that dropping point, that deficit from the top just proved to me and you that that is the perfect starting position. So. When you do a first rep on a deadlift, i.e. a max deadlift, you only get one shot. 
always find the middle of your foot. Now that to me, heel to toe, that's the middle of my foot. That is the perfect starting position. What we do from here, is we grip the bar with straight legs, as so, and then you don't move the bar any direct, you don't move it forward, backward, it stays exactly where it is. And what you do is just drop your hips, and the second the hairs on your shin touch the bar, that's the perfect lifting position. So I'll keep dropping the hips, drop the hips, drop the hips, there. So the shin's touching the bar, that is the perfect lifting position. Now what you find sometimes is that some people le lean over the bar a bit too much. They're sort of hunched up, leaned over the bar. So it's nice and easy to fix that. Make sure your arms are straight. And I always tell people to envision themselves in a leg press. So you're in a leg press position and people always lean back into the heels because that's where all the power comes from on a leg press. And you see people, when I say that to people, they're just leaning back a couple inches and it just puts that center of gravity perfect. And, it, and again, it's all about that A to B motion. You don't want to be leaning over the bar, start pulling, and you're, up, like you're over here, start pulling, and then you end up coming back into the center of gravity. That's A, B, C again, and that's inefficient. You want the A to B. So we're in this position, straight legs, drop the hips, shins touch the bar, and then visualize yourself in a leg press, so you instantly drop back onto your heels. Keep your, keep your chin against your chest for safety, and just pull like you're in a leg press. That is the perfect deadlift technique. If you're watching from the side, that A to B line would have been absolutely perfect. If you pull it over your toes, this is the number one mistake I see in people in the gym and people in, in competitive lifting as well. Is they have the bar too far over the toes, like that. Right? And when you grip it and you start pulling, look what happens. I'm not going A to B, I'm having to pull it in, then go A to B. And that's what I call ABC. Waste of energy. And obviously you're not getting the, the, amount, the most amount of power from the floor to the driving position. Um, footwork is essential for deadlifts. People go too narrow most of the time. And that, that for me diminishes a lot of your power. It takes away the quads, puts all the emphasis on your lower back. So space it out. I always go shoulder width. When I, was, I mean, when I was 440 pounds, I'd go shoulder width plus an inch, because obviously all the bulk here was stopping me going close, so shoulder width's usually about right, plus an inch if you have to, and feet straight, feet like the lot, because if you spray your feet out like that, then you're gonna be falling forward and backward, and the same if you go in, you're not as stable. So feet straight, planted like you're on train tracks, that's the perfect way to deadlift. Hand position. Now, if you can, competition-wise, you want to be using straps. If you're a power lifter, then tough shit, over and under. Um, but for strongman, the most efficient way is double overhand with straps. Now, the width of a, uh, a grip should always be, so if your feet are shoulder width, then your hands should be just outside shoulder width. So you want it, so when you're pulling, your hands never come into contact with your body at any point. So I usually say, when you find your shoulder width, just do that with your thumb, find the, the thumb in the middle of your shin, and then grip the bar, and that is the perfect sort of grip. And that way, when you pull in, it never touches your body. You don't want any extra resistance, you don't want the hand dragging up your body, you don't want to be creating any more resistance. So, cut it out. Even to the point where, when I pull the 500 kilo deadlift, I was putting talcum powder, Vaseline in my armpits just to, just to reduce that resistance because when you get to the lockout position, you don't want all this friction stopping you from locking it out. You want it to be nice and smooth. Now the width in which you grip a bar makes a big difference as well. <laughs> if you've got the bar in front of you here all hunched up, then all your chest muscles, all your lats, your bulk is stopping you from getting that lockout. So you could be stuck here, not able to get your shoulders back and you need your shoulders back for that lockout, the down signal from the referee. So what I do is go wider, let's say thumb in the middle of the bar. So that's hitting the middle of your shin. And that way it puts the shoulders just the perfect amount where they're able to drop and you can basically pull your shoulders back a lot easily. So if I'm gripping it too narrow, what happens is that I can't, it's really hard to get my shoulders back and get that lock out. And gripping it wide, so much lower. 
the bar, the bar actually travels probably two inches less because you're not bunched up here. Watch my hands drop when I move my shoulders out to the side. It's just that little, those two inches make a huge difference, especially when you're pulling such huge weights, you know. Let's say if it weights, makes 1% difference, when you're pulling 500 kilo, that's five, that's five kilo. You know, it's, it's a lot of weight. So it's very important to get the grip right, the footwork right, and get the bar in relation to your body. So at the middle of the foot. Now to build power off the floor, it's all about speed. You know, it's all about explosiveness. If you're not explosive off the floor, you're never gonna pull a big weight. You've gotta be as fast as you possibly can. Think of it as, think of it as a nail, right? So that's the nail and the hammer is your arm. So your arms are the hammer. So here's the bar and you wanna be hitting that bar with as much force as you can. So you've gotta treat your hands like hoops. So when you go double over, you just want to relax your hands, get the straps on right, so you don't have to think about it too much. Basically, when you start pulling, it's all about that hammer hitting the nail, remember that. So when you start pulling, it's like that, boom. It's all about that massive sort of power from the floor. If, right, so if people struggle with back pain and uh, and power from the floor. All those free options I've just given you, you know, the footwork, the hands, the, 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 the bar in relation to your body, i.e. the middle of your foot, something's gotta be wrong. You should never get a bad back from deadlifts. It's always about some bad form of technique. So do all those things. <coughs> I never, when I'm training, when I'm training for the 500 kilo, I never really pull the weight above my knee because to pull the weight above your knee, anyone can do that. You think about it, you pick a yoke up, you pick a yoke up from this position, most strong men can pick five, six, five, six hundred kilo up pretty easy. So you've got the hip power to do it. So why, why would you train it in deadlifts? You've got the power, so you don't need to train it. It's all about the power from the floor to the knee. So, good tip for everybody out there, and there'll be a lot of backlash from this, I'm sure, right? But 500 kilo deadlifter, no one's ever come fucking close. So, when I'm deadlifting for high reps or, or speed reps, I'll only pull to sort of here, and then I'll put it back down there. there. Because from there to there, there's a hip thrust. Everybody's got the power to do that. So, don't waste your energy training it every single week. Do it now and again, probably every six weeks. Get your hips involved, get your hips firing but don't waste energy on it on your important gym sessions. As I say, from here to here, it's about hip power, but it's also about getting your shoulders back. So this is where all the assistant stuff that we'll do after the deadlifting. So all the assistance exercises is like lat pull downs, rows, really getting that upper back strong. And that's just able to get from here to get to that lockout position. If your upper back's weak, your deadlift will never ever be good. So that's the perfect deadlift technique. Give you all those points there. Uh, I'm gonna warm up to a tough set of five or six reps. I haven't deadlifted properly for nearly a month, probably a bit more. So uh, I'm gonna be taking it steady today and uh, just do what feels good really. You know, I say a tough five or six, when I get to five, six reps and it finding it hard, I know that the weight's getting too much then. I'll be lucky if I hit 260 kilos today for five or six reps. As I say, I haven't deadlifted for ages and it's not something I'm working towards. You know, I pulled the 500 kilo. I don't need to be strong in deadlift anymore. So it's all about just keeping the function there, keeping moderately strong. You know, I've got this TV shows where I've got to be strong, but um, I'm, I don't need to be pulling 500 kilo, that's for sure. So here we go.
That's how you know you're deadlifting properly when you're taking the skin off your shin. It's got to be that close to your body. Right, that is uh, toughish, toughish five, five reps. Uh, bear in mind, I haven't deadlifted for well over a month, so I'm going to leave that there. Uh, you know, I'm not aiming for a max deadlift right now. I don't need to be strong in deadlifts. Max, my max deadlift right now would be around about 400 kilo. You know, if, even today, if to get suited and booted, get psyched up, I'd pull 400 from the floor. Uh, give me three months, 450. Give me, give me 12 months, I could pull 500 again. Uh, but there's just no need. You know, I've said it time and time again. Come, come and pull 501. No one will really give a shit. And that's the God's honest truth, man. You know, tell me who the second man on the moon was. Tell me who the second man to run a four minute mile was. That's exactly my point. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, it's one thing, man, you know. I've been on the road literally solid the last seven months, absolutely solid. And uh, working out at hotel gyms, gyms I'm not familiar with. Uh, been really hard really really hard it's uh, getting that motivation to get up at five o'clock in the morning to go to a gym before you do a 12 14 hour day you know shooting tv shows solid you know, I, I mean that takes me back to my youth you know when i was sort of 17 going on to 24 i was working 10 hour days in a day job i would then do four hours training and then I'd go to the doors, so I'd run, run a security company, and then I'd work doors till three o'clock in the morning. And I did that six days a week, every single week, you know, for, for the best part of eight, nine, 10 years, you know? That's graft, that is absolute graft. And I actually, I thank my younger self for all that graft, because it got me to where I am now, but how the fuck did I do it? But I'm kind of doing the same thing now. Uh, given the training's taken a lot, a lot more relaxed but still having that motivation to get up and get in the gym i don't know how i do it some days you know you really got to kid yourself keep kidding yourself it's going to end in some big amazing opportunity and uh you got to think to yourself if you miss an opportunity because you were lazy then you're going to be kicking yourself when you're older and i've always said this you know i don't want to be that granddad i don't want to be that granddad down the pub 20 years time he said oh you know i could have will could have won the world's strongest man if i'd have quit my job and trained i could have been in big movies if i you know if i'd have trained and gone to the meetings and did the tv shows i want to be the man that said i did that i achieved it i worked hard and look at me now i want to be that guy all right right assistance work I always work between the 10 and 12 rep range. Uh, it's always a tough one because these are, these are in, in, in effect, little muscles. You know, they're like the lats, the rhomboids. They're not huge muscles. They're all, they're all sort of skimmed across your upper back. And uh, so they're not really the kind of muscles that you can really tear up in five or six reps. Like deadlifts, yes, squats, yes, bench, yes. But these, you've got to get, get a little bit extra reps in there to get them to work, get them to rip. So 10 to 12 is always good for the, the smaller muscles, such as biceps, triceps, you know, the, the upper back, uh, your calves, stuff like that. Stuff that's used a lot, you know? Um, and you want to be doing as heavy as you can, really. You want that 12th rep to be tough, you know, really hard. So I will start on sort of three quarters of the stack, warm it up a little bit, 10 reps. Go two plates heavier, 10 reps, two plates heavier, 10 reps. Uh, stack it out, get a bit of weight on the top as well. 10 to 12 reps, and that's it. That's uh, that's lats done. There's one thing that I see a lot in the gym, and that's people overtraining, you know? The guys in here that will come and do bench press, they'll work up to a max. You know, they do like, say, if the max is 200 kilo, they do a 200 kilo, and then they'll drop back down again and do 100 kilo for like 500 reps. And that is just 
pure stupidity. It really is. You know, you've ripped the muscle, you've trained it to be powerful, you've trained it to rip in the max weight. It's all about muscle memory. Why would you then drop back down and, and teach that muscle to lift lesser weight, you know? And rip the muscle even more. You're, you're almost going backwards doing that. So I always say on every single exercise, end on a high always end on a heavy heavy weight because it's muscle memory your muscle will remember that and you come back next week and you'll still be big strong and powerful when uh when you start maxing out the machines you know i can't put any more weight on there i've got a full stack i've got weight on the top the only way to get what i want out of the exercise is to be explosive you know get those fast twitch fibers ripped that's where all the power comes from that's where all the bulk comes from so uh being explosive is so, so important in the gym, especially for strength sports. If you're not explosive in your training, then how do you expect to be explosive in competition? You know, you've got to train the fast twitch fibers constantly. <laughs> so what I'll do with this exercise now, and pretty much every exercise, is just pyramid up to a point where the 10 reps it's super hard or if for instance if i'm stacking out the machines obviously just do it as explosive as hard as i can stuff like this the plate loading machine's pretty tough to to uh to outlift a machine you know like this with the with the weights on so i'll probably get it to four four plates a side maybe a little bit more get up towards 10 reps and that, that that'll be plenty you know that's enough to sort of rip the muscles and then just move on to the next exercise we'll, we'll uh so these are the two lat, lat exercises i've just done and then we'll move on to rhomboids uh do the row motion as well get the get the middle of the back and the upper of the back as well this is a good tip for everyone out there goes to the gym put your fucking weights away okay if i can do it you can do it So I have to, uh, in order to make this machine heavy enough, I have to put the weights in a certain way. So I have to make sure that they fit into in the grooves together, just so I can get that extra plate on. So if you look at the end now, I can only just get that sixth plate on. And this is the, these are the struggles of a world's strongest man. You know, everywhere you go, you're having to sellotape weights on and balance things on top of each other, use bangs. Uh, it's a top line. Oh, so I've got a volunteer. I'm gonna stand on the weights for me because this is too light. This is Dave, it was your birthday last week, wasn't it, mate? He was, mate, yeah, I was 50, 50. 72. 50. 72. Looks good for 72, <laughs> doesn't he? Looks good. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. You know how to stand on it. Stand on the weight thing, So, no, you have to put like your foot majority on that. On that, yeah. Otherwise, the weight spin. No so, just put it there with your heel on the weight. Where do you want me old? Ready, Lou? I'm ready when you're ready, yeah. Just move forward to me a bit more, buddy. That's it. Keep, it, keep the weight on that bar. Okay. Oh, 
Indeed, boy. No problem. No problem at all. Uh, lifting weights was so yesterday. It's all about lifting people now. Is it two o'clock? Done a good two hours. All I've been surviving, surviving on so far is two liters of cranberry juice with four scoops of the oblivion. So the carbs from the cranberry juice has been fueling my session, and uh, <clears throat> the protein is getting in the in the system already, uh, repairing the muscles from that very first rep all the way through the training session. And now sort of the last bit of the session, sort of the last half an hour, 45 minutes. I always have a protein shake. Uh, so we've got two scoops of Wave 100 from my band, and then I'll have a litre of full fat milk, lacto-free, so it takes a lot of the sugars out. And uh, whew, again, it's just a great way of replenishing, getting some carbs in there, some good fats and a large dose of protein. So you're looking at 30 grams of protein from the milk, uh, probably another 35, 40 from the, from the protein powder. So you're getting a good 60, 70 gram of protein during the end of my session. And then right after my session, I've got a meal with me. I'll have a, I'll have a, uh, a meal with high protein, high fat. Uh, and again, it's all about getting that protein content in. If you're not getting enough protein in, you know, I weigh, in the minute about 375 pounds and you want to be matching it gram for pound so you know at least at least one gram of protein per pound as, as a minimum sort of threshold but you want to be upwards of that and to get in 375 gram of protein a day it's a lot of food you know, hell of a lot of food right that is up about done good all-around session there Start with deadlifts, got the erectors firing, the glutes, the quads a little bit. So we've done that bit, uh, hit a few sets at 260 and then we worked on to upper back. Solid session there, got two exercises for the lats, two exercises for the rhomboids. Went really, really heavy on all those, maxed out all the machines. Getting towards the eight to 10 reps, really struggling, really hard and again, I can get to the point where it's a little bit too easier and being super super explosive and trust me like I'm, I'm 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 fucked you know it really does fatigue you very fast when you're doing explosive movements like that uh, sometimes even more so than doing the heavy weights um, so that's back done now i'm going to get some ab work in nice and easy uh, Jeez, I'm tired, man. It's same, mate, it's hard coming. I've been in the States for months, got off a flight yesterday. I'm meant to be flying back out to LA tomorrow at 4 p.m. Just never ends. Keep cracking on. Oh, that fucking hurts, man. That hurts. Before I went to the States, that was a banner of me, and I've been replaying fact. Come with me. I'm gonna have this out with the owner right now. This is, this is not on. That's it, are you, are, you, are you just diminishing my name now? Is that it? Well, Done. Well, he's, he's like a true champion, isn't he? He like, didn't retire off his career. Carried on, became, that's what makes a champion. It makes a legend, somebody that actually doesn't give up. 
and just carries on through thick and thin. I think I'm going to go find a new gym tomorrow. Abs is an easy one for me. I've got such a, I think I've said this many times before, I've got such a fit core from the years of Strongman. I only have to do three or four exercises uh, a week to keep the abs pumped and full. Uh, I've got huge, huge abs, like Coke cans. Like that's an ab, right there. That's another ab, that's an ab. You know, so I uh, just have to keep them firing, keep the blood in the muscle and they'll stay big. Disappears like my neck. I just look like a turtle. Yeah, good man. That's a wrap for today. Done a good session on back, deadlifts, upper back, thrashed it, feeling rather sore. Uh, I'm gonna be really sore tomorrow, I know that. Four sets on the abs. Uh, again, I don't need to do too much, got huge abs, just gotta keep the blood, blood pumping in there now and again. Um, so, back in the UK for one day, got back yesterday, home today. Uh, I think I'm flying off to LA again tomorrow, so, uh, I try and keep the content coming. It's been really tough with being on the road so so much. Uh, we'll be hiring a full-time videographer very soon, uh, and we'll get things uh, really ramping up a level with the YouTube. Get you guys some good content coming. Uh, I'm gonna start getting some guests on as well. Um, I want to start doing a podcast, and the podcast won't just be a sit-down podcast. It'll be a podcast where I invite them to train with me. I put them through the paces, and we ask them a load of questions along the way. So it'll be a good bit of fun. Uh, thanks for watching guys, subscribe to the channel, be awesome, big love the beast, see you later. I'm a motherfucking